Today we will make a stop and disembark on the handsome Ganymede. This is the satellite of Jupiter, the largest in the solar system. It is larger than Pluto and Mercury, and could even easily be classified as a planet if it only revolved around the Sun. But although Ganymede is overall in size, its mass is inferior to the Mercury one, more than twice. The reason for this lies in the low density of the object. It is only twice the value of the same characteristic for water. By the way, this is one of the reasons to believe that the substance necessary for the origin of life, here on Ganymede, is present, and in a fairly large amount. True, in contrast, we can say that here the temperature is very low, up to minus 193 degrees Celsius. In such cold weather, it is unlikely that any living organisms inhabit the satellite. Ganymede is about the same age as the Pope himself, Jupiter. It is more than four and a half billion years old. The structure of the satellite's crust probably resembles a similar structure on Earth. The tectonic plates, which are on Ganymede, large chunks of ice in the past could move and collide, forming faults and mountains. This assumption is confirmed by the discovered solidified flows of ancient lava. At the equator of the satellite, not so long ago, they found a large bulge, in size it is comparable to Ecuador, and in height reaches half of Mount Kilimanjaro. Possible reasons for the occurrence of such a relief feature is the drift of surface ice, from one of the poles to the equator, such a movement can occur only if the ocean is located under the crust of Ganymede. Its existence has long been discussed in the scientific world. It is believed that the sea ocean can be located at a depth of almost 200 kilometers below the surface. Water ice, according to astrophysicists, is found in large quantities in the bowels, and this is another feature that characterizes Ganymede. The largest moon of Jupiter has three inner layers, a molten core, consisting only of metal, or of metal and sulfur impurities, a mantle consisting of rocks, a layer of ice 900 to 950 kilometers thick. And perhaps between the ice and the mantle there is a layer of liquid water. In this case, it is characterized by a temperature below zero, but does not freeze due to high pressure. The thickness of the layer is estimated at several kilometers, and it lies at a depth of 170 kilometers. The surface of Ganymede consists of two types of landforms. About 40% of it is covered with numerous craters, and 60% of light grooves, which give the companion its characteristic appearance. The grooves were probably formed as a result of tectonic activity, or during the release of water from below the surface. These grooves are so high that they are over 609 meters high and stretch for thousands of kilometers. Ganymede is the only satellite in the solar system that has a magnetosphere. She is the second stronger than that of Mercury. But the most amazing thing is that we can listen to it even now, I'm not kidding. Several American universities and space research agencies have recorded space songs. And one of them belongs to Ganymede. A special honor is awarded to a person, without whose activities the sounds of the universe would never have been recorded. Fred Scharf, he created the Voyager Acoustic Recording Project. I am sure that each of you will find your own association to these extraterrestrial sounds. There is also a thin layer of the atmosphere here, but not so sufficient for living organisms, at least known to us, to live on the satellite, in 1995, thanks to the Hubble telescope, which nevertheless was able to detect the presence of a very thin, oxygen atmosphere in Ganymede. It is believed that it is formed due to the destruction of water molecules that make up the surface ice. Under the action of ionizing solar radiation, water molecules decompose into hydrogen and oxygen. But hydrogen quickly escapes into space, since it is a very light gas, oxygen is retained, but it is in both molecular and atomic form. Atomic hydrogen is found at a distance of 3000 kilometers from the surface. The existence of an oxygen atmosphere in Ganymede was discovered from the spectral data of gases and ice creams in ice on its surface. 
The discovery of ozone absorption bands was reported in 1996. In 1997, spectral analysis revealed the absorption lines of dimmer, or, more simply, diatomic oxygen. Such absorption lines can appear only if oxygen is in a dense phase. A better explanation is that molecular oxygen is frozen into ice, but it turns out quite contradictory and maybe life, and then it is unreal. Nevertheless, while Ganymede considers a likely candidate for the presence of extraterrestrial life, will it be possible to establish only new flights of interplanetary stations? Let's go further. Ahead of us is an excursion to all the interesting satellites of the solar system. Don't miss anything, stay on my channel.